What's up, Rig Pals? Writing well, speaking well, and effective communication more broadly are comprised of various matters. Indeed, annex multiple issues. One of the most important is to mark the difference between similar words used in deceptively similar ways. And if you heard nothing wrong with what I just said, then you are in the right place, my friend. And it is so good to have you here. Ryan Kelly here, your square esquire and lovable prig, giving all manner of writers, rewriters, and speakers tips and tidbits on the lexical tools of their trade, the better that they might be able to distinguish themselves as careful users of the language and take their communication skills from enough to effective. I release videos every Thursday, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a chance to learn the best ways with words. With that said, let's get underway. Among the most nettlesome pairs of problem words are comprise and compose. Until relatively recently, when discussing the constituents of a larger whole, the word that recommended itself most readily and naturally was the word compose. Sentences are composed of nouns, adjectives, and verbs. Three square meals are composed of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My full courtroom and business attire is composed of business slacks, black socks and shoes, a button-down shirt, a belt, a tie, and a business jacket. Yes, the tie is necessary. Do not question this. Unfortunately, however, in our age of faux refinement, Writers and speakers often replace the word compose with comprise, as though the latter were some high-toned synonym with no practical distinction. And I see this replacement everywhere, even in the most prestigious corridors of media and government. An article from late June of this year that appeared on NBCNews.com referred to Democrats' plans to form a committee to investigate the January 6 U.S. Capitol attack comprised of more Democrats than Republicans. Heck, just a few weeks ago, Justice Amy Coney Barrett, while speaking at the University of Louisville, said that the U.S. Supreme Court wasn't comprised of a bunch of partisan hacks. To be fair, it's a use well over a century old, attested by the Oxford English Dictionary as first appearing in 1874. Henry Fowler and George Fowler, the first major critics to comment upon the issue back in 1907 in their usage guide, The King's English, attributed the misuse to little more than the transposition of one word that belonged to another construction for another, namely composed. But the misapprehension was perhaps deeper than the Fowler brothers had thought. For in fact, the word comprised could be observed in its improper meaning not only in the passive construction, comprised of, but also actively, as in the several branches that comprised the family tree, a use that dates all the way back to 1794. Accordingly, Maurice H. Wessin can be seen back in 1928 in Crowell's Dictionary of English Grammar, which is strangely not by some dude or dudette named Crowell, criticizing the earlier act of use. Eric Partridge, in his Usage and Abusage later in 1942, called it rare but still well worth avoiding. Long story short, writers and speakers were clearly a little mixed up about the meaning of the word comprise, ascribing to it the meaning constitute which the word compose had properly served for centuries before the word comprise horned in on its territory. All right, all right. So what does the word comprise actually mean? Well, just the opposite of the word compose. It means to take in, to include in totality, to be made up of. As for the relationship between the active and passive constructions for each word, Wilson Follett in his 1966 Modern American Usage provides an eminently useful mnemonic device, which I will now do my level best to impress upon all of you. Enjoy. For what it's worth, Merriam-Webster considers the sense of comprise meaning constitute to be established. And the 2011 survey of the American Heritage Usage Panel shows only 32% rejecting it. Doubtless that number is even lower today. Still, arrayed against these latitudinarians are the likes of the New York Times Style Manual, the Economist Style Manual, the Chicago Manual of Style, and Benjamin Dreyer, copy chief of Random House. So we have a choice to make, people. The tepid endorsement of the dictionaries or the authoritative pronouncements of some of the most prestigious... Oh, oh, oh God! Ah! Tough choice. But at least now you can make an informed choice. For the truth is, even some of the most liberal usage commentators of the 20th century came down on the misuse of comprise for compose. 
It may well be that no one will misunderstand what you're saying if you choose to flout their wisdom, but if you do, the most highly educated set, the set to which all writers and speakers would be well advised to appeal if they seek to advance themselves, will likely tie your slipshod usage to other areas in which you endeavor, so choose wisely. If you got value out of this video, please like it, share it, and feel free to leave a comment below if you're on the side of the dictionaries or on the side of the usage critics, or have some other usage issue altogether that you'd like me to cover in a future video. Don't be shy, but be careful. And remember, propriety is always in.